Welcome to another edition of All Lights Film Magazine from the Karlovy Vary International Film Festival. Today we bring you some of the movies that were screened on the second day of the festival. Athens, the district of Plato's Academy, a small quiet junction with three tobacco stores and a dock. Stavros owns one of them. His wife has left him and refuses to come back. His mother has had a stroke and he has to take care of her. The three tobacco on his favorite hobby is counting the Chinese who are setting up shop across the street. They only stop counting if an Albanian goes by. Then they bet on whether the dog will bark at the Albanian or not. This is how they spend their days, watching life go by outside their stores. Yet Stavros is constantly worried and inexplicably unhappy. He suffers from insomnia and is unable to pinpoint what is wrong. Then one day, an Albanian passing by recognizes Stavros' mom as his own long-lost mother. Intelligent and funny, the film examines the theme of identity crisis and observes Greek society as it faces others. Η μαμά μιλάει αλβανικά. Δηλαδή είσαι αλβανός. Κάσε μωρα μαλάκα. Τόσα μέρη, τόσες χώρες. Από την Αλβανία βρέθηκε. Να σου πω. Τους Κινέζους πώς τους κάνεις. Ξέρω ένα Κινέζικο τραγούδι να στο λέω. In his latest work, Zion Sono, the infant terrible of Japanese film and one of the most interesting directors of contemporary movie making, doesn't spare viewers, doesn't prepare them gradually for the story but rams him headlong into the plot in the first five minutes. When the disfigured and dismembered corpse of a young woman is found in an area of town notorious for prostitutes and bordellos, police investigator Kasuko is called to the scene of the crime and she launches an investigation. In another plotline, we follow the story of young Izumi. Although married to a well-known romantic fiction writer, their relationship is detached and routine. Izumi gradually discovers her own sexuality and suppressed passion completely engulfs her. Despite the fact that Detective Kazuko is married and has a little girl, neither is she immune to the allure of love and romance. As with his previous pictures, Zion Zono treats the story as a pretext to plunge into the very core of an individual, to his or her most secret and hidden recesses. The visuals correspond to the movie's theme, the screen is ablaze with color. Is it possible to create a viable thriller with only two main characters who spend most of the time in one room and are barely capable of moving? Starting from this absurd premise, the director created an inspired and superbly suspenseful movie, an original genre experiment whose plentiful black humor brings a touch of objectivity to the undertaking. A paralyzed man lies in a hospital bed and would just soon as die. But after a new patient is assigned to his room, the hero quickly recovers his zest for life and his desire to rehabilitate himself because he realizes that the other man similarly paralyzed and suffering from amnesia is the one who murdered his wife. In addition to numerous twists that gradually reveal the adversary's common past, the film keeps the audience in suspense why the bedridden hero's ingenious plan to kill his opponent using hospital equipment. Enemy at the Death Pen presents one of the most original genre debuts to come out of the South Korean film industry last year. <laughs> Ha! 
죽여줘 수준이 지은 건 니지 않았니? Drama All My Loved Ones, Slova director and screenwriter Matej Minnak introduced to the world the true story of Nicholas Winton. Just before the outbreak of the Second World War, this unknown Englishman succeeded in taking 669 Jewish children from Nazi occupied Prague to safety in Great Britain. Minnak returned to this theme with the feature length documentary The Power of Good, Nicholas Winton. Both films were extremely well received and led to the discovery of surprising new facts. Today, Winton's story is familiar all over the globe. Thanks to Minak's film, dozens of other Winton children have been found. Some of whose stories are told in the documentary film Nikki's Family, which incorporates dramatic reenactments. Protagonists include leading American scientist Ben Ablis, former administrative officer of the International Monetary Fund in Washington, Alice Masters, and geneticist Liesel Sylvester Stone. If you look at the very back of this scrapbook, fascinating things in it, all the letters. But back here is the list of all the children. This is Vera Diamant, now Vera Gissing. We did find her name on his list. Vera Gissing is with us here tonight. Hello, Vera. And uh, I should tell you that you are actually sitting next to Nicholas Winton. <laughs> Amir and Serikpai are children of school age. They are growing up in rural Kazakhstan without their father who went off to Russia in search of work and never came back. Their mother Paulina is raising them and they share their home with Paulina's old father and her sister. Without male support, the daily grind is often hard for Paulina and she finds that she cannot cope. The boys are taunted at school by their classmates but neither shame nor dishonor affects the great love they have for their mother. This film is enhanced by his wonderful cast and also by its screenplay written by famous Iranian filmmaker Mohsen Magmalbaf for his Kyrgyz colleague who this time chose Kazakhstan as his location. Kibat's social drama betrays a raw poetic style characteristic for Central Asian cinema and will delight all viewers who expect a prominent display of pure, strong emotion. A darkly comic road movie across Northern Ireland toward redemption in the form of a lamp with very unchristian like anuds. Two outsiders are on their way to make a pickup that is a lamb, Liz, whose boyfriend Joe is a junkie, and Joe's father, Eddie, a corpulent 50 year old with depression. Their alliance is purely expedient. Liz is going to visit her son, who is growing up in a foster home, and Eddie, willing to save Joe's neck at any price, persuades her to be his driver. On the way, this odd couple undergo a series of bizarre, comic, and tragic situations culminating in Eddie's abysmal attempt to play the drug dealer. Eddie's desire to atone for his parental failings is linked to Liz's painful past and feelings of guilt. And it is this connection which elevates their journey into a quiet process of healing that manages to avoid sentimental happy ending. This laconic picture combining Christian symbolism with bitter irony and pervasive misery is John Michael Duff's feature debut. You're out of bullets. Liz, what are you doing? With that, it's a wrap-up of this edition of Karlovy Vary International Film Festival 2011. We'll be back shortly with some more movies from the festival venue. Stay tuned.